Afternoon, ladies and gents. It's Simon Brown here uh, doing the introduction for today's webinar. Today we've got Warren Peacock from the Traders Place doing the, the, the presentation. He's talking about the, the seven uh, steps to trading success. Comes from Mark Douglas's book, Trading in the Zone. I think pretty much if you're a trader, you've probably read it. If you haven't read it, it's all certainly on your list of books to read. Uh, and we thought it'd be a great idea for someone who's, I suppose, practically experienced it is probably the important point and to, to pull their important points from it and then to, to, to sort of engage in the points and tell us the what, the why's, the where's, the how's and the like. Uh, we probably, I looked at the, at the presentation, I don't know if Warren's going to get it done in the 30 minutes as we always try and do. We're not going to cut him short. If you need to leave, as always, we are recording so it will be available at a later stage. Uh, probably by tomorrow morning it will be up on just one lap and you can go and view it there. But with that, I'm going to hand, hand over to Graham says audio breaking up. Uh, Graham, I think I was over speak. I was coming out too loud. Uh, so let's hand over to Warren and see how his sound. Uh, Warren should be coming through on your side. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as Simon said, you know, Mark Douglas probably wrote the best book on how the mind works for trading and what you should be focusing on. So I put the presentation together, you know, taking from his seven steps to trading success, and I've tried to put a little bit of my own personal experience into it. Uh, the first slide, you know, these things can be taken as a reference material. So write down the headlines, keep the list next to your trading computer, you know, staying focused on what you need to learn is probably the most important part of things. Uh, and it's one of those parts that most traders do not focus on. Using your trading as an exercise to identify what it is that you need to learn. Now, you know, that sounds pretty straightforward. You know, I need to learn how to trade. Um, and if I do learn how to trade, then profits will take care of themselves. Uh, the problem is, what exactly do you need to learn? Uh, one of the things is, you know, that you can put on your list is when not to trade. Uh, that's as important as learning about an indicator you know, or a uh, trade trigger, something like that. You need to know when not to trade as much as you need to know when to trade. When you are focused on trading, then you are taking responsibility for your own learning. You know, a lot of people want, you know, want a hand-holding situation where everything needs to be discussed. And that's not really the way that you learn how to trade. You learn how to trade by actually trading, and then you use someone to discuss the ideas of trading with you. Uh, the stronger your commitment, the faster you're learning. You, know, you could spend five minutes a day uh, trying to learn how to trade, or you could spend five hours a week, or you could spend three hours a day. The more effort that you put into this, then the greater the return will be in your understanding. Now, uh, Mark Douglas also spoke about, you know, the, the the way that traders develop. Year one is just basically learning stuff. You know, you learn a whole lot of stuff. Uh, year two, you start to put it together into something that you understand. Year three, you should be, you know, starting to become successful at. It. Um, once you've gone through that process, you will know what it is that you need to learn. And I think that's what, you know, the being point one by one is the most important point of all seven. The next slide would be dealing with losses. Uh, you hear this from everybody. I try to just put it into a way that, that maybe is simple to, to apply. Define the loss before it is taken. In other words, if you know what your maximum loss is going to be, you can actually focus on the chart. If you know that your stock loss is 2,000 rand and currently you're only down 1,200 rand, there's not a lot of stress because you know that when it gets to the 2,000 rand loss you're going to close the position. It is necessary to understand and completely accept the necessity for those losses. You cannot be perfect all the time. Every trade is different and what we try and do is make sure that we follow the system in discipline, knowing that you are not going to have a hit rate of 100%. If you fail to do this, if you fail to accept that those losses are necessary as in the greater scheme of things, you then start to generate fear 
and then you end up with the losses that you're trying to avoid. Define the loss, know that it's, you know, from time to time you're going to have to take losses and just accept it as part of trading. Being flexible and open about what losses mean should be included in your trading strategy so that your response becomes automatic to the market condition. Not every stop loss has to, you don't have to wait for your stop loss to be hit every single trade. Sometimes the market warns you before the stop loss kicks in. And it's important to understand that. You do not have to wait for the 2,000 rand stop. You could get out of the 1,000 rand loss because the market has changed. The minute you're focused on the money, you forget to look at the market. When losses are predefined and taken without hesitation, there is nothing to consider, weigh, or judge. In other words, you actually don't have to think about it anymore. You've defined the loss up front. You've defined the trading system will incorporate all the signals to get out of the trade. When that occurs, you take the loss and you walk away. Point number three, becoming an expert at one market behavior. Now, this can be tough uh, because there's you know, thousands of different things that you, you read about, you listen to people, you go to meetings, and there are literally thousands of indicators, thousands of strategies, and you have to pick one. Well, the whole idea is, like I said in the beginning, you know, you've got year one where you start learning all sorts of stuff, and then year, year two, you start putting it together into some sort of trading plan. By year three, you should have decided how exactly you want to trade. Now, obviously, there are ways to speed this up, and that is just more hours and speaking to more traders until you find something that you enjoy and that makes sense to you. Let some trading opportunities go for educational purposes. Well, what's the rush? If you're in a rush, you're focusing on the money and you're not really focusing on trading skills. <clears throat> now, for education purposes, can also become an excuse not to trade. Oh, I just want to see what's going to happen. Now, the danger with that is that you never actually trade and you never actually make any money because you're always learning and never really learning because the only education you can get for real is trading. Do not expand until you understand your market thoroughly. I don't think it really matters where you start. Uh, you know, Forex is the biggest market in the world. Everybody sells that as, as the one place to go and get rich. If you take the time to focus on one market at a time, you're going to be a lot better off than trying to trade five different markets at the same time in your second year of trading. So try and stick to the one market till you know it, and then take it a step further. Step number four, learn how to execute your trading system flawlessly. That is everything. Your trade setup, where then you have your trade trigger. Then you have a warning of a stop loss. You have a stop loss trigger. You have a warning that the profits are getting, is getting close to your profit targets. The price hits your profit target, and you then execute either side because you're not really worried about the money because you planned for it in the beginning. Before you've made the trade, you've probably got a stop loss. Well, you should have a stop loss, uh, but you, you may also have some profit targets in place or you have a system that will tell you when to exit the trade. Those trading systems that you've created and that are created by other people, mathematically defined, quantify and categorize past relationships any collective human behavior to give a statistical probability of the outcome in the future. So that's a whole lot of words for saying you're using math to determine the probability of the outcome. You've already done all that work. You don't need to think about it once your trade is in place. Two concepts need to be integrated <coughs> into your mental schema. First is probability. Second is correlating the mechanics of the system to the market behavior. Now, I know this is a lot of information. You're going to have to work through it one step at a time and obviously get hold of me if, you, if you're stuck with something in particular. But all of this will be incorporated into your trading plan. The mechanics of your trading system. If you are using, for instance, a MACD, it's a moving average crossover trading system. That will only work on a really strongly trendy market. If you trade something like a stochastic and the market is trending, you're going to end up giving away a lot of the profit because it's going to go overboard very quickly. If you can understand those two concepts, one is a trending market, one is a trading market, 
and then you can take the mechanics of your trading system and apply the correct mechanics to the market. The other way to do this, of course, is to find shares that fit your system, to find an index that fits your trading system. If you are a trend trader, then you find markets that trend. Now, <laughs> the next point here, traders rarely keep a system longer than three losses in a row. Now, guys, three losses in a row is a very common occurrence. You try out the RSI, it gives you three trades, there are three losers, and you don't trade it the next time. And the fourth trade makes up all losses that you've created on the first three stops. A trading system cannot be validated over three trades or four trades. You need a minimum of 30 to have a statistical answer. Even if you trade those 30 on paper, realistically on paper, not just guessing, with proper entries and so on, then you'll have a better idea. So three losses in a row occurs often. You cannot try out a trading system on three losses. This is where your discipline now becomes important, as well as confidence that your plan will, with flawless execution, provide profits over time. If you have spent you know, six months building a trading system, you should know what its result is going to be over a set of steady trades. Once you've done that, it should then be easy to take the discipline and follow those signals one after the other, whether it's a profit or a loss, doesn't matter. The system over time has to create profit. If you know it doesn't create profit, then you shouldn't be trading it. And if you haven't tested it at all, you won't have any confidence. Which now brings me to uh, slide number five, or point number five, learning to think in probability. And this is what the market is. This is what trading is all about. You build a system to put the probabilities in your favor. So what often happens is people put these probabilities together and then start you know, thinking personal. Uh, the market hates me and the other traders are out to get me and the, you know, the rich get richer and all that stuff. If you can learn to think in probability, then nothing really matters because the market will probably do this after that has occurred. So we start off with looking at what is the market telling me at this point in time? What is the market telling me? Is it trending up, trending down? Is it on support, at resistance? Those little things become important in the great big picture. How much strength is there in the mood? So you can use your volume to confirm it. You can use momentum analysis. How much strength is there? The last thing you want to do is trade in one big green candle and then find out that you know, it traded a quarter of the, of the number of shares that it should have traded in the day to create that candle. So you have to have a way to measure the strip. Is momentum building and can it be measured relative to something? You know, one of the oldest tricks in technical analysis is higher lows with a higher high. That shows you that momentum is building. That is something that you should keep your eyes open for. What would have to happen to indicate that momentum is changing? Now, changing momentum would be, let's say we've got the thing going up, we get a lower high and then a lower low, momentum has changed. The problem for most people is that they think, or I wouldn't say most people, but a lot of traders in their first three to five years start to think that they're too late for the trade. Unfortunately, you can't pick the exact top and the exact bottom every time. If you do do it, it's pure luck, I promise you. You want to know what will tell me that momentum is changing. So that would be the higher lows coming in, that can give you an indication. On the upside, you can see momentum changing with a lower high. Simple process to measure that momentum, or you could have some sort of momentum indicator or an overbought, oversold type oscillator like a stochastic. Is the trend really weakening, or is this a normal retracement? Now, that's a very tough one to, to get your head around. Part of the momentum thing, is the trend really weakening? Is it changing? And when I, if I personally do that kind of analysis, and I want to know whether it's a weakening trend or a normal retracement, I'll actually zoom out to a longer time frame. Because I want to see that it's maybe occurred over the last six months, or is it just in the last week? So you have to have criteria to determine whether the trend is actually weakening or if it's just a normal replacement. Point number seven. What would show
show whether momentum is weakening or whether there's just a normal recursion. If the market has displayed a fairly symmetrical type pattern, and that pattern has been disturbed, then it is a good indication that the balance of force has shifted. You know, you've got the triangles, you've got head and shoulders, you've got all these nice chart patterns that can give you a really good idea as to what's going on. Triangles, for instance, tend to be uh, continuation patterns, so they're a hesitation, normal retracement. Head and shoulders is, tends to be a reversal pattern, not a continuation. That can tell you that these trends are weak. Are there any places where one side would definitely gain dominance over the other? If that point is reached, can we still, you know, can, will it take time for the other side to be convinced? A bear doesn't turn into a bull overnight and vice versa. You know, bullish traders are always looking to buy the bull pullbacks. It takes quite some doing for them to change their minds and then become sellers. How long are you willing to give them to stampede out of their positions in order to panic up? Now, beginner traders tend to, to be buying the highs and selling the lows. Uh, you have to change the way that you look at the market. Experienced traders are trying to get out somewhere near the tops. <clears throat> Always difficult for, of course. But that's where the experienced guys are getting out. And then the panic comes in, normally speaking, with the weak hands, and they start panicking out. And you can often see that the volume diminishes in the first downward move. If those traders do not step compete out of their positions, what will that tell you? So all those bulls have been in the market, we see the market retracing, the volumes don't really give us an indication of what's going on, that most likely means that the strong players are holding their trade, expecting it to continue upwards. Point number 10, what do traders have to believe to form the current pattern relative to the past? Remember, people's beliefs do not change easily unless they are extremely disappointed. Any index trader or forex trader out there will know about non-farm payrolls out of the States. That's a big market mover. And the point there is that it very rarely changes the trend. So traders have to actually change an entire belief system to change their mind about which direction the market is going to go. So all the best players, all the big traders, all the institutional guys have to actually change from bulls to bears to begin selling. So either they're extremely disappointed and they are disappointed when those expectations are not fulfilled. Disappointing results come out. You know, how many didn't quite deliver what it was expected to deliver, even though the, the results weren't terrible, uh, they just didn't deliver and the market decided to sell them off. So you have to also decide what it is that will disappoint the predominant force. Interest rates going up. If, if uh, the Saab increases interest rates, it's going to change the dynamic in our market. What is the probability of that happening? What's the likelihood? You know, is the Reserve Bank going to really change interest rates at the next meeting? Are they going to push them up? At this point, unlikely. But never is it impossible. There's always a possibility. But that's very different to probability. What is the risk of finding out why you are in a trade? You know, if, you, if you've left your stop losses up to, up to the wind, uh, then your risk is huge. If the market looks like it may be turning, but it hasn't triggered your stop loss yet, you can then analyze what the risk is from that point, saying that if the market is actually changing its mind here, uh, then I'll have to find out later. How much is that going to cost me? Point number 14. Is there enough potential for movement to make the trade worth the risk? In other words, your risk to reward ratio. Is it worth me holding this position in case the market is not changing its mind? Or should I be looking for another trade? Should I be looking to exit this trade? And those are all questions that you have to answer nearly every single trade that you Get into. Point number six, learning to be objective. Mark Douglas wrote that you need to operate from a set of beliefs that allow for anything to happen. In other words, your belief system has to be very much, you know, whatever comes, comes, and I'm prepared for any eventuality. 
if I if I spend too much time saying, oh, the market's got to go up from here, it's got to go up, it's got to go up, uh, you end up, you know, market down 50% as in 2008, nine, and you hold, you know, you're still holding those positions. You're down 50%, and when you should be buying, you're actually starting to get up, and that's purely because the market cannot go down any further. It must go up from here. He states that you can assess your own level of objectivity by determining whether you have achieved the following state of behavior. This is quite important. It's a nice quick checklist. Every time you decide to analyze a trade, and that's one that you're in, these are the points. You feel no pressure to do anything. This is, you have to feel no pressure. In other words, it's just another day at the office. You have no feeling of fear. You're not worried about the trade because you've planned. You feel no sense of rejection when your stop loss is hit because that was part of your plan. There is no right or wrong. The market really doesn't care. You as an individual cannot move the market. You cannot change its direction. So therefore, you're not right and wrong. You're just a trader making a decision based on a set of probabilities. And that is all you have. You recognize that this is what the market is telling you right now. It's telling me that it's going down, so I'm out of there. And I'm going to go short if I'm trading on leverage. You can observe the market as if you are not in the position. So you can step back from the trade. You're not worried about the money. You can just look at the charts. Or you can, if you're a fundamental trader, you can look at the fundamentals and not stress over the money that is in the trade. But you can objectively look at the market and decide what you would be doing now if you wanted to trade. You're not focused on the money, but on the structure of the market. It is important to release yourself from the need to be right. The more uncommitted your assessments are, the less potential for distortion. If you think that you have to be right every trade, you're going to make horrible mistakes. Point number seven, learning to monitor yourself. Yeah, most, most people tend to not really think about what they are thinking about. So to become a successful trader, you have to be aware of what exactly you are thinking at that moment. You need to pay more attention to what you are thinking and what market information has been focused on. If you are sucked into a five-minute chart and you forget the hourly, uh, you're going to end up you know, being in trouble because the, the five hours, all the noise at the hourly, will smooth out, and the hourly is all the noise that the daily talks smooth out. But if you know what it is exactly that you are focusing on right now, then at least you can make decisions. Trader needs to identify personal dangers that affect the results of their trading. You need to know your weaknesses. What it is that poses a danger to the way that you approach the market. If you are ill-disciplined, then at least you know you're ill-disciplined and you can work around it by putting this plus in the system on your trading platform. If you are someone who's very disciplined but you're struggling to read the market, well, if you're struggling to read the market, it means that you haven't found that thing that you understand fully. So you can then focus on doing that. Go and find out what it is that you need to learn. So my question is, what do you need to change within yourself to become a successful trader? Well, once you answer this question, the real learning can begin. You can't learn something if you do not know what it is that you're supposed to be learning. It's no good learning about trending markets if deep down you are a contrarian trader and you want to trade smaller moves and you're using a MACD to do it. A trading system is only as good as the trader's mindset. It is only as good as your belief systems. Any trader can give you a successful system that they might have been using for years. And the chances of you being able to take that system and trade successfully immediately are very slim. Highly unlikely because you do not have the belief system that goes with that set of trading tips. That's why it is so important to find a way to create your own trading system using indicators that other people might have taught you, but a trading system that you, as a trader and a person, fully understand and you are integrated with it and you can use it to analyze the market. I hope that was informative and interesting. Um, 
what I have done in the spirit of just one lap, you know, all this stuff is free of charge to subscribers. Um, I've put in a one month free coaching session for anybody that's listening to this presentation. Uh, for those of you that are going to be listening to the recorded version, you also qualify. I've left it valid until the 1st of November uh, for this year. And that's basically, I'm closing down in December, so I can't do a full month from the end of November. Uh, if you could just quote the coupon number 1JOL when you contact me. And I have to restrict the number of people. Obviously, I can't deal with 100 people at a time. So I've put this restriction on of five people per month on the, on the free service. If you contact me before the expiry, in other words, if you can hold me before the 1st of November 2012, I will honor that discount until everybody has been sorted out. So I won't just cut it off and, uh, you know, leave you hanging if you have, if you have contacted me. Uh, Warren, your star, thanks. And I gotta say, I mean, the, the Trading in the Zone is a book that I read every year over my Christmas holiday. I must have read it 10 or 12 times. It, it's totally my Bible to trading. And even just sitting here today and, 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 and uh, listening to Warren speak, it resonates. And I think one of the points being is, is that we never become a trader and we can sit back and, and relax. It's that constant process of, of improve, uh, improving slash maintaining our trading. Uh, folks, if you've got questions, uh, a couple of comments have come through um, around uh, a number of issues. The one I want to deal with, uh, firstly, Graham says, uh, Daryl Guppy's trend trading book talks about mindset. Uh, any views in the book and the methodologies? Graham, I know the book well. Uh, in fact, my lazy system is adapted from his methodology. Um, I like the book. I like the methodology. The other one is Stephen uh, Covell, C-O-V-E-L, which is, uh, I think it's just called Trend Following. If you Google him, you'll find his webpage. He's written a couple of them. As always, I typically read the person's first book because uh, it took longer to get to. So certainly I think that Dale Guppy was well worth uh, a read. Uh, a question coming through, Warren, I'm going to throw it to you as well. It, it's a difficult question. I don't have a direct answer to it. How long to become a successful trader? And I'll preface it by saying it took me five years uh, or four years and change. And I'm going to put the excuse that this was sort of back in the 90s. We didn't have webinars and courses and, and the like. But I, I suppose it's going to be different for the individual and how much time you're able and prepared to put into it. Uh, yeah, Simon, I've met traders that, uh, I haven't met anybody that's been able to become, I suppose, what would you class as successful in the first place? Uh, if you're a short-term trader and you're making less than six, uh, sorry, making more than five to six percent a month, then you can consider yourself successful as long as you're consistent. Yeah. Um, that kind of trader I've never met, you know, with less than five years trading experience. Yeah. It, it's, it's my sense. Malcolm Gladwell talks about, yeah, Gladwell talks about 10,000 hours to become the best of the best, and, and, and I don't think we necessarily need to do 10,000 hours, but I do think we need to put in the PT. Trading's like anything else, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a skill we've got to get to, uh, and, and absolutely uh, it's going to take time to get that skill. Whether you want to be a plumber, a brain surgeon, or a trader, or anything in between, there comes some, some, some learning there. Uh, Susan particularly liked the idea of, of master one part of the market, and, and Susan, yeah, don't try and trade everything, don't try and trade every indicator, any oscillator, become an expert. My expertise is quite simple. I do trends, I do them based on moving averages, uh, and typically I'm lazy, so I like to do them over the longer term. Uh, folks, I'm not seeing any questions coming through, so we are bumping up on the half hour mark. I'll leave it there. Uh, take Warren up and it's also well worth it. Uh, there is a bunch of you in the trading room here, so it's take a bit of time if you all rush at once, but he has kept it open. Uh, Warren, really appreciate it. I think, uh, I mean, even for me, this is what I spend a lot of my time teaching. For me, a great refresher, and we're getting great feedback. Thanks very much. Awesome. Thank you, Simon.